but solve problem 7.68 for microelectronic circuits 8th edition by Sedra and Smith. We have a common emitter amplifier utilizing ABJT with beta equal to 160, biostatic collector current 0.4 milliamps. It has a collector resistance of 10 kilo ohms. Before we start answering the questions, let's draw this amplifier. And I'm going to use the hybrid pi model. So this is a common emitter amplifier, which means we're amplifying at the emitter. So we have our signal, and we naturally have a signal resistance. And we have our input voltage, and because we're using the hybrid pi model, we're going to call this V pi, and our input resistance R pi. But we also can just say that the input resistance is just equal to R pi. Now we're at the base, and here we have a dependent current source equal to GM V pi. And we have our node here to our collector resistance. So this would be the collector terminal. And lastly, we're reading a output voltage here. And we know for common emitters that the upper resistance is just equal to the collector resistance. So now we can start solving these questions. Let's start by finding R in. So we know that's equal to R pi. And there's a formula for R pi. It's beta divided by gm. So we need to figure out what gm is. So gm is equal to the collector current divided by thermal voltage. So that's going to be 0.4 milliamps divided by 0.025 volts. And that's going to be 16 milliamp per volt. So therefore, R pi is equal to Rn, which is equal to 160 divided by 16 milliamp per volt. Notice that in the denominator, we have a unit of milliamp. So our final answer will be in the unit of kilo ohms. So this is going to be 10 kilo ohms for our R in. Now, RO is pretty easy. It's just equal to RC, which is 10 kilo ohms. And lastly, our open circuit voltage gain is simply just negative GM times RC, which is negative 16 milliamp per volt times RC, which is 10 kilo ohm. If I calculate to uh, negative 160 volt per volt. Let's continue. If the amplifier is fed with a signal source with a resistance of 10 kilo ohms, that's referring to this resistor up here, and a load resistance of 10 kilo ohms is connected to the output terminal. So now we're connecting a load resistor here to the output terminal. Find the resulting closed circuit gain AV and GV. So AV is the closed circuit voltage gain. And it's basically just the open circuit gain, but we are having to do the resistor division between the load and the output resistor. So it will be AV times RL divided by RL plus RO. So that is negative 160 times 10 divided by 10 plus 10. So that's going to be negative 80 volt per volt. Now, similarly, GV is now doing the resistor division from the input terminal with R pi being divided by R pi plus RC. So it's going to be AV multiplied by um, R pi, our input resistor, divided by R pi plus RC. So that is negative 80 volt per volt times, once again, 10 divided by 10 plus 10, that's equal to negative 40 volt per volt. Okay. If the peak voltage of the sine wave appearing between base and emitter is to be limited to 5 millivolt, what amplitude of signal voltage is allowed? 
So the pink voltage between base and emitter is referring to right here, this V pi. So our amplitude of V pi is equal to 5 millivolts. And we can calculate V signal by, let me write the original equation. So it's V signal times RL, or sorry, not RL, Rn divided by Rn plus R signal. That's equal to the amplitude of V pi. So we can isolate V signal to be equal to V pi, and then we're just flipping this fraction. So it's Rn plus R sig divided by Rn. So that's equal to 5 millivolts divided by, or sorry, multiplied by 10 plus 10 divided by 10. So we're just doubling it to 10 millivolts. And we have one more question. Uh, what output voltage signal appears across the load? Okay, that's pretty simple. It's just going to be the, the, the absolute value of the gain, closer to gain GV, multiplied by the amplitude of V signal. So that's going to be 40 volt per volt multiplied by 10 millivolt to get 400 millivolt or 0.4 volts. So that completes this question.